The Family, The Home Conference 2023. Theme, Adorning the Hidden Man in the Family. Welcome to the Grace Life Kami Podcast. This conference avails us of the knowledge of God's plan, purpose, and character for us and our families. And also helps us understand that God is interested in our actions and lifestyles. The family of the new creation is ordained to follow the order of the finished work of Christ. The spirit and act of dominating and controlling are not a part of the marriage family template in the Garden of Eden. This conference has been carefully designed to suit both the single and married. Beloved, listen to this session to get these and much more from the scriptures. Jesus is Lord. The, the, the Hebrew word for rule there is the word mashal, mm. and it's not far fetched, feed mashal. Mm. You know, it, it entails the military. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So you can see the violence, the force, and look at the words that explain rule there. They are all they have to do with subjugation, mm. you know, dominion. One of the words that explain it there is dominion, subdue, and every of that. You know, so that's not a template. The template from the beginning was the Christ like template, and that's why we don't, you don't. You don't subjugate each other, whether financially, whether it's not a battle. Mm. You know, um, the marriage is not a battle. Marriage is not a battle. It's not a battle. Mm. You know, um, like I, I heard somebody once said, the Mister because we said when you get married, it's a battle between, you know, both parties, and after the wife, somebody wins. Mm. So you, that's why you see, you see, that's why I go to some marriage. I see that the woman is louder. Because of my I see that the man is louder. Mm. So what happens is that for the first maybe few years, it was a it was a domin- dominance battle, mm. and the, the person who finally won the battle became Indeed. louder. Mm. Yeah, but that is a fallen ideology. Yeah. And some of the times, some of the times, because of our experiences and our societal influences, we begin to work with a fallen ideology towards marriage. Mm. Now, any marriage that is Christ-centered, it is. Christ that is louder. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. It is not the man that is louder. It's not the yes, man that is louder. Mm. It is Christ that is louder. Mm. You know. So if you have to go into marriage as a battle, it's going to be a serious battle for you. Mm. And you see either one person trying to dominate the other in emotions mm. or in finances or in and it's just it's going to be hell. Mm. It's going to be hell. Big time hell. Yeah. And that's what a lot of marriages are suffering because they've chosen to be in a battle. In a battle. I say, when you have such an atmosphere in the home, then you begin to have people um, withholding. Yeah. Instead of releasing. Yeah. You know, okay, so if I withhold this virtue of mine, then I'll, I'll make him better. You know? So I don't want to make him better because if I make him better, then he's going to overpower me. You know, mm-hmm. these terms begin to come in. Mm-hmm. He's going to overpower me, then he's going to do the, He has the finances. He's the one that's making the money. Uh, he's doing this. Okay, so if I add this to him, to make him better, no, then I, I keep it to myself. You see, so all these things don't bring the best out of the Christian home. If we allow all this uh, falling uh, character, this falling marriage characteristics to keep, you know, having a head in our homes as uh, believers, then uh, we won't get the best out of our marriages, and then uh, Christ will not be, you know, reflected through our our, our families. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, so we uh, our, our focus remains. Um, likewise, you have been in subjection to your own um, husband. So we must not ignore the word "own" also in this verse. Okay, as wives, um, now speaking to women, we should be under obedience uh, according to the scripture, and um, that means to be we have to be devoted to our own husbands. It's very important, you know. Except otherwise, as as a wife. You willingly accepted to make uh, your husband, your man, your husband. Okay, so meaning that out of the millions of men on the earth, you chose one to be your head, uh, and not just a figurehead, but according to scriptures, a head is one that provides you know leadership that engenders salvation, just like Christ is to the church, you know, and not just salvation but revival to you and your home. So this. Uh, makes it important for us to be willing to to be you know to to obey the head of the home praise the lord Hallelujah. our level of obedience determines the extent to which we will enjoy the leadership of our husbands as well whether we like it or not praise god we've had stories of uh you know uh, some 
husband and wives, a little quarrel, and the enemy takes advantage of the little quarrel. You know, like the popular story of um, the husband and wife ha having a quarrel, and then the husband got to work, and then he saw that um, he saw a text message asking for, I think, the code for his ATM card. You know, and unknowingly to him, it wasn't his wife, but because okay, he doesn't want to talk to her. Instead of calling to confirm, why do you need my code? Why you already know my code? You know, he didn't, he was angry, so he didn't call her, and he just sent the code. Not knowing that some um, people have, you know, stolen the card from his wife and wanted to, and the people just, you know, withdrew their money, and by the time they both realized, they have been duped. And that's because they allowed the enemy. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must not give in to this as wives. Praise God. We should, you know, continue to offer our obedience willingly praise the lord Hallelujah. so for that but try this point of you know um allowing the 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 head of the home to to offer his is um to to carry out his role of leadership properly mm -hmm. okay um let's consider the church community again especially uh in this our time in africa there are some christians who are in subjection to their leaders, they are in subjection to their man of God, they are in subjection to their pastor, than they are to even Christ. Mm -hmm. That is why it is more rampant to say, My pastor said, My pastor said, than this is what Christ says. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And this this is not where it ought to be. And you see, we are just a reflection of <laughs> our, our state spiritually. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. If we can be more reverent to our pastors be more reverent to our prophets than we are to Christ how much more would we be to our partners uh, do you understand what I'm trying to say yeah. that is why we have issues of oh she she's she she does what her pastor says but when I speak she doesn't listen to me we have such situations happen Ephesians 5 23 to 24 says for the husband provides leadership for the wife just as Christ provides leadership for his church as the savior and revival of the body in the same way the church is devoted to Christ let the wife be devoted to her husbands and everything praise the Lord hallelujah to Jesus um, he, he says let me just hit this one he says in the same way the church is devoted to Christ you know, so that's why I said our relationship spiritually you know as believers to Christ reflects in our relationship even to our spouses okay so you can you know, um, bringing back the statement "own," mm. own, um, own speaks of ownership. Um, there must be an ownership mentality on the part of the wife mm. for her to be able to submit. Now, so if one of the reasons why a lot of wives don't submit is because they've never seen this husband as their own, mm. and some of the times it's not because maybe he has um, a a side chick outside or he has or is or is um a mommy's boy or whatever there are many reasons why some women will say this man is not my own mm. um but that's not the reason we're talking about here now when something is your own no matter how it is you appreciate it mm. for example when when you own a car like those days they used to say um is the owner of the car that knows how to drive the car mm. when you own a car you see that there's some cars that um our parents used to have then that there's a special way you used to um, ignite the car. Mm. When you give their key to somebody else, mm -hmm. when you give their key to somebody else, you discover that the person cannot ignite the car. Mm. You get because of the the situation surrounding the car. Mm. They know how to manage the car. They know how to walk around the car because you know they own the car. Mm. The proof of the, 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 the husband being your own is that you must know how to walk around him. Mm. You must know how to manage him. Mm. He must know how to let me use the word drive him. Just the same with the owner of the car. He knows that there's a, there's a, there are some wires we need to connect together mm. for him to be able to you know get the car started. Mm. Whereas if it's somebody else that takes the car, the person may not know that these are the wires to connect mm. and the car gets started and mm. are we together. Yeah. Now but, but because it's his own car, he knows how to go about it. Also, they always advise people don't um, give your car out to somebody to drive mm. because the person may not know how you're managing the car mm. and he could end up with just one driving experience of mm. your car. He could destroy a lot. Mm. Now, so the own husband here comes in very handy because 
if you have the mentality and you understand that this is your own husband, mm. you know how to work around him. Mm. Submission is impossible. Let me use the word impossible when you don't own your husband. This is a very, 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 very important, um, you know, point you just made. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, we know that the the, the man has a, a place in chasing the woman. Mm -hmm. You know, like I was, I was just thinking um, after the session yesterday, I was like, you know, we we learned yesterday that it, it, the the whole principle is the man has to loan the esteem to the woman to owe him owe it back to him, mm -hmm. and it's not forceful in any way. Mm -hmm. And we said. Uh, um, Revelation 3 verse 20 Beware I stand at the door and knock You know, Christ does not force anything on us And we are not to force it as husbands yeah. On our wives, amen yeah. And we discover that when we are actually um, Trying to get the lady's hand in marriage We knock at her door continuously mm. We chase her, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. But by the time the man gets married He stops chasing mm. But the actual fact is that he's meant to start chasing When he gets married mm. Now, So he keeps knocking, Is a continuous knocking knocking exercise why the woman submission is a continuous owning exercise okay so before you go to uh deeper um the 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 we've, the we've been having owning you know issues in marriages yeah but negatively yeah you know because when you speak of owning we're talking about personalizing someone yeah. you know and um i say negatively because you've seen people who are so possessive and possessive in the sense that they can kill, you know, but we ought to be possessive, but not um, to the extent that you rever him over Christ. Yeah, in fact, when I talked about owning, I said something. Mm. You see, I use the analogy of the car owner. Yeah. Who knows how to go around this? Mm. He could give, if he gives his car to somebody else, mm. the person may not know how to ignite the car. Mm -hmm. He may not know some many things the guy does the owner does just to keep the car moving mm -hmm. because the car has a lot of challenges mm -hmm. Are you get what i'm saying that's one of the major aspects to ownership you know in um the woman owning the husband mm -hmm. comes in you must know how to work we talked about you know loving with even the flaws mm -hmm. you must know how to work around this husband you own yeah if you, if you look at the Greek word for, for own, is the word idios, you know, and it speaks about pertaining to oneself, one's own, belonging to oneself. Exactly. Now, so one of the proofs of ownership is knowledge. Mm. That's a major proof of ownership. Mm. You cannot own something that you don't know. Mm. In fact, for example, when you get a phone, one of the first things you start doing is that you start walking around the phone. Yeah. Trying to know the phone. Mm -hmm. I'll just use some simple analogy. Yeah. You get any device, you start walking around, you try to know it. Now, women find, wives find it difficult and um, being in subject submission in order to be, like we said, it's not, you don't su submit, you are, you are submission. Yeah, so why find it's it, what's, it, it's your lifestyle. It's you, it's you. Mm. Uh, why find it, wives find it difficult being submission because they don't have the understanding that they own the husband mm. when you have the understanding that you own the husband mm. you can be in submission mm. you can be submission mm. despite the challenges yeah. the man has this car the car has a lot of challenges but he doesn't have the money to buy on that car so he has to what walk around these challenges that the car has because it's his own property mm. and still make the most of it mm. and this is where a lot of wives have problems mm. in being submission you must have the ownership mentality mm. for you to be in submission to the man yeah it's not being possessive exactly negative. That's that. it's not being jealous negative exactly it's being an owner mm. that knows everything about this property he owns mm. so he can effectively and efficiently utilize the property exactly so the wife for her to be submission mm -hmm. itself she has to own this husband mm. own him you know his flaws you know everything you know how to walk around it and get the best out of him you know his emotions you know his twists you know his tones you know his weaknesses and then because you know this you now know how to submit well, knowing fully well that we also grow in knowledge of each other. Yeah. You know? So it's just that um, when we start with this knowledge, especially for singles, this is a good information for you. 
start gathering the information start getting the knowledge the basis for the knowledge um, I mean, the basic knowledge you must have is that that thing of high esteem yeah that you, you always know, respect that you you will always respect you know so when the thoughts and the rest of them start coming up and you start knowing them that high esteem is still the core value you know which still helps you submit like i saw i saw some car shoes and they were, they were actually antique cars okay cars that were like 40 years old and mm. that. i saw people the, the, the different driver the way owners were car, displaying their antiques and one of them they asked him why this car why why are you why are you still with this car he said i like old cars i i have a very good uh, mechanic who knows how to repair my car so even with the oldness of the car and the challenges the car brought up over the years he learned ownership you know so ownership is progressive are we together it's progressive and that's the reason why um most marriages fall apart because we don't understand that ownership is progressive and what we need to know is that the the, the, the where the the ownership mentality comes where the ownership idea comes is from the wife to the husband amen to jesus that's where it comes in so the wife has to have a good ownership understanding and grow in it if you don't have this ownership understanding you discover that you would find it difficult time and again being submission you find it challenging time and again being submission because you've lacked ownership and that's the reason why some wives could get to a point where they take a very risky or very wrong step because they do not understand the place of owning the husband mm. and is the journey you as the wife have to continue yeah you have to keep owning yeah is it continue you have to continue that, that's the reason why you there are times you may have to ask um questions you know converse with the, with, with the husband and if, if you cannot converse you may have to pray you may have to study just to make sure that your owning your owning journey continues mm. and so you can continuously be submission okay so just, let's bring it back to our relationship with christ you know as a church for the church to reflect reflect christ and uh, we've said it over and over again is a continuous process it's a continuous process. Until, and, and it's, it's a continuous process of studying the word studying the you know obeying the word receiving the instruction doing it progressively receive progressively obey progressively um do progressively return to study progressively communicate you know so it's it's the same thing in marriage only is on the wife's part yeah so she has to continue to you know um dig it dig it up that's what uh, that's what i want to use because it has to be a progressive stuff. So uh, it's not the man you knew when you got married. That is still the man today. Exactly. So <laughs> you you know, and that's why we have issues where um even they, they tell you, okay, um after one year, two years, you begin to discover if I change you know, when the children are coming, you be, look at see if I change. It shouldn't be that way. If you know, we understand if we keep this mentality of ownership, yeah, you you know that you have the role of continuous um <laughs> knowledge the, the, uh, the christian work is basically knowing christ more position, exactly second corinthians 3 verse 18 as we beheld in a mirror mm -hmm. the glory of the lord we're changed into the same image from, from glory, glory to glory that's our journey our journey is seeing him more mm -hmm. and seeing ourselves more mm -hmm. so the more we see christ the more we behold christ in the mirror of his world the more we see to reflect Christ exactly same same way in, in the home in the home yeah. the woman has to see because whether i like it or not the, the wife is a reflection of her husband exactly yeah the woman has to keep seeing the man mm. on that ground she will see herself more. Mm -hmm. that's where her right understanding of ownership comes in mm. you know what i'm saying yeah you see um we have situations i'm not talking about born again christians yeah, we have situations where a man can become secretive Mm -hmm. the reason why a man becomes secretive is as a result of the fact that the woman has stopped owning him i get what i'm saying mm -hmm. the reason why a man can start he, he, you say oh, suddenly he's changing it's not actually suddenly changing you have stopped owning him mm -hmm. and so that's why the owning process must be progressive in order, and when the actual fact is that when you keep owning you discover that you can even know the areas to pray for for him 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can know the areas to pray. You can know what to pray for for him. Mm-hmm. You can know how to pray for him, and you can know how to you know help him become who God has created him to be. Mm-hmm. So ownership on the woman's part is on the wife's part is very very important. Mm-hmm. You see, you cannot do this for any other man. It's exactly. a man you have chosen. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you you have to own him mm-hmm. and as you own him they are, they are, they, as you keep owning him he can be a 40 year old car mm-hmm. that has an ignition problem mm-hmm. but you can know how to walk around his ignition mm-hmm. and you have a, of a couple who the, the the woman always knew how to be somebody always said the the man does not pray he doesn't do spiritual exercises like the way she does spiritual exercises you know but as I grew up, I began to understand that, you know, she didn't understand the concept of ownership well. And as I looked like, you know, she was always, as it were, complaining. Now, it may be a car that has an ignition problem. Mm. It can be fixed. Yeah. But you must have the understanding of an owner. Because the owner will always want to fix his car. At least where his purse can carry. He will always want to make the car useful for him so when we when wives have this ownership understanding they would always know how to walk around getting their husbands in shape as it regards you know god's blueprint for them mm. and with that you will not have a problem submitting so i i really like this but because while i was studying yeah i i, I observed own you know in a different light but this understanding that there's a ownership mentality, you know, it comes differently. Because it's not pos- po- being possessive, not being jealous. Yeah. That's why I said it, it's been um, wrongly um, viewed. And that is why many have even suffered. You know, trying to be possessive of your husband. Then you begin to fight other people because you want to possess your husband. You know, um, as, a, as a child of God, you don't have to do... You don't use um, physical means I to, work here, not to own. Yeah. You don't use physical means. I mean, we've had marriages, uh, marriage seminars where you tell women, uh, dress this way, uh, perfume yourself this way, uh, dates many times a day. You know, all those many, many complicated ways that it's not norm- it's not usual for a normal woman to follow all that process. After, all after, to own after, a man. after you had this. Exactly. So we just put unnecessary pressure on us. So when it's just it's the scriptures, possess the me- or the ownership mentality. He is your head. He's meant to be the savior and the revival of the home. You know, and the only way you can engender this activity or this um, role that God has given to the man is to have the ownership mentality and the ownership mentality like you said helps you to walk around even the force yeah you know why you hold in high esteem what you held in high esteem from the beginning yeah. <laughs> of the yeah. night you know you remember the story i heard about a particular it, 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 it was a, it was a big man of god and he 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 had a mistress mm. what we in africa call the side, side chick. chick all right and his wife knew that this was a, this was a situation on ground she was she was frustrated about the whole thing she didn't know what to do and when he travels to go minister he calls the side chick to the hotel mm-hmm. and they have their phone time all through the whole ministration mm-hmm. sometimes just even, he just leaves home and you know mm-hmm. goes close by near, not far just to have time for the side chick and and the woman his wife kept asking the lord what to do and then finally the lord told him to that the next time he's traveling the next time he's going he said, go with him and perform your wifely duties to him spiritually while you are doing it physically. Mm-hmm. So, this time around, I wanted to go. He said, oh, please, let me go with you. Like, no, 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 no. He said, he said no, I will manage whatever hotel they give us. I'll just manage it. Even if it is half bed that is there, I'll sleep on the floor, but I'll just manage it. And she was like, after much persuasion, he agreed. Now, with that, there was no place for the side chick. The side chick. And then she carried out her wifely duties, but praying in the language of the spirit. She kept on praying. After that singular act, that was the end of the side chick. She had to understand how to own a husband. 
So that's the reason why it's a spiritual and a physical activity. So we tell you, like you said, and uh, dress like this perfume. So we tell you, uh, give well, I, I want to, I, I'm, I'm stressing the fact that it's mostly spiritual. Yeah. In it's fact, not. I want to say 99.9% spirit. So, so they, they place so much emphasis on, um, on the, the physical. physical. Yes. And the actual fact is that, like somebody said something, he said, marriage is not the solution to promiscuity. Exactly. A promiscuous one before marriage, if God, if he doesn't have an encounter with Christ, and he, he and, and he doesn't have a revelation of God's saving grace mm-hmm. to deliver him from that demonic addiction. Mm. Give him give him a thousand wives, he will still become the same. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a spiritual understanding that should influence your action. Exactly. More often I've seen that it affects your lifestyle. Your lifestyle. Yeah. Because the submission, the subjection you are saying is a lifestyle. Yeah. More often than not, we've seen that we've been able to we have we have Taking marriage from physical to spiritual, exactly. instead of from spiritual to physical. to physical, they tell you give him, give him, you know, intercourse as much as he wants. Mm. Blah 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 blah. And when you just, you see, so some people don't understand this basically. When you have done all the whatsoever you say you want to do, it, goes out it just again. goes out again because the actual fact is that this is a situation of satisfaction. And you see, spiritual many, satisfaction. many 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 wives are frustrated. They are frustrated because, because to them, I cook, I cook good food. I prepare myself well. I dress. <laughs> give him all the satisfaction. And yet, and yet I can't see, still own him yeah. as possessing. He can't be mine. Exactly. He's sharing me with other people. Yeah, so, so you need we need to understand it from a spiritual undertone. Mm. And as I said, you have to walk around ownership mm. as a wife. You need to know this this husband. Mm. Walk around him spiritually before you start getting physically. Ment- uh, mentally, psychologically, in his soul, walk around him, know this person, and then you can now be able to now own him spiritually down to physically. Now, and it's all about we, the women, getting to know how to own. Yes, as we as we as we continue, because we are talking about Adonis the hidden man. Yeah. Okay, and Adonis the hidden man is not just the wives. It's going to be also. We're going to look at the husband side too. Yeah. So we'll not take too much time on this, so that we can still touch other areas. Yeah. Okay. So um, from what we got from Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-three to twenty-four, we understand that um, the reason some Christians are not enjoying the all-inclusive and all-round salvation and revival that Christ provides us uh, via His leadership over the church is because their devotion is channeled to another person. Or, uh, you know, another thing, a cyclist. Yeah, yeah. So, as a wife, I will not get the full package that God has put in my husband if I, I, I don't have the ownership mentality I ought to have, you know, that helps me to be in submission or in subjection. To be subjection. You know, to my husband. Yeah, yeah. That's just it. Yeah, yeah. Many, oh, yes, uh, yes, Christ has saved me. Uh, yes, I, I enjoy sound health, but why is it that my finances are suffering? Ask yourself, to what extent are you submitting that part of your life to Christ? Yeah. Because see, some believers, it's, it's very difficult for them to use the scriptures to do business. Yeah. Very difficult. Ah, how would I do this business without lying, like someone told you? <laughs> Pastor, the reason why I don't want to get too close to this God is because... I, I, I'll, I'll be forced to use the scripture to do business. And if I don't, if I use scripture to do business, I won't make money. And, and you see, basically, the way, the way we, we surrender to Christ mm. is the way we surrender in so, our marriage. Exactly. That's what I said earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Submission, you see, the man, the way he submits to Christ mm. is the way he so leads, leads his, his wife. wife. And exactly. also some because Apostle Paul talked about submitting so, yourself to one another. Yeah. So submission is dual. Mm. We always look at submission from the female. Yeah, because right now we're not using efficient. No, we are so, using first um, filter, So that's why. Yeah. yeah. Now, so the way he submits to Christ is the way he leads and submits to his wife. Mm-hmm. And also as a woman, the way you submit to Christ mm-hmm. is the way you submit to your husband. So, um, the, we we're talking about the triangle yesterday. Yeah, the triangle. Christ is at the, at the center. He's at the at top. The top. Yeah. And both of us, for, for our relationship to, to flow, as husband and wife, we must all get our our reflection, our source from Christ. Yeah. Otherwise, we can't... So, so, over the years, we have 
we have become legalistic in marriages, mm-hmm. marriage seminars, marriage conferences, mm-hmm. so legalistic. And one of the challenges that we had in the in the church over the years was legalism. Mm-hmm. The law was given to bring man to make man see the need for a savior. Mm-hmm. Until the church tree tries to become legalistic by you know sticking to the law. And while we are still dealing with that, with the revelation of God's grace, we are still seeing a lot of legalistic measures applied in marriages. Mm-hmm. And it can't help nobody. Mm-hmm. You can't we can't succeed as parties on a legalistic platform. No. It won't work. Mm-hmm. It won't work. Now, Christ is not legalistic. Love is not legalistic. Yeah. Love is the law of Christ. Mm. It's the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That's love. Mm. I get what I'm saying. But it's not legalistic. Yeah. It's not demanding. Mm. It's supplying. Yeah. It's not demanding. It's supplying. Mm. Now, so if we actually want to live and have our marriages the way God created them to be from the beginning, it has to be centered on Christ. Yeah. So now. The wife must take supply from Christ. Mm. The husband must take supply, supply from, from Christ. Christ. And then they will not struggle to supply to each other. Exactly. exactly. Because it's meant to be supply, supply. Supply, supply. Not demand and supply. And supply. Mm. It's, we, don't, we don't operate with the law of economics mm. in marriage. We operate with the law of the spirit. Which is the law of supply. You, know, supply. you, see, you see, where the root cause of the effrontery some partners have to say, if it's not because of me, you would have suffered. You know, if it's not because of me, would you be where you are today? All those statements are because we lack this understanding that we're supposed to be doing supply. supply. Yeah, it's a supply, it's a su- supply supply business, not a not a demand supply. Yeah, uh, the demand supply business is what has made a lot of marriages, you know, become a shadow of the true ideology of um, God's blueprint for marriage. Mm. Because you see men tell their wives, you see, I, 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 all you are doing is eating my money. Exactly. You are just, you are just growing fat in my house. Never of that. And you that, do nothing. You do nothing. You bring nothing to the table. Do nothing, do not, <laughs> uh, but I don't know why you said she brought money to the table. You were the one who wanted it like that. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh, whatever. So, but if you have a supply, supply ideology, it's that's the way God relates with us. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why it says, "Come, let's reason together." The idea of college together is we can both reason at the same level. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The idea of marriage is that, remember, it is one side taken away from the other side. Mm-hmm. So that one side is a whole, is meant to be a whole side that needs another whole side for them. One will chase a thousand, two cannot ch- put ten thousand to fly. Yeah. So it becomes a supply supply ideology. Mm-hmm. When, when this when this comes into play, we discover that you don't have a problem relating. Yeah. You know, I, I remember I listening to a marriage counselor and he and his wife, they had serious challenges in their mind before. But I say they got to the point of divorce mm-hmm. until he got to God. And, he said he married very young. So he didn't know a lot of things. You know, so they got to the point of divorce and he, when, they, when they were about, at the verge of divorce, he went to God and said, God, okay, see, it's like, man, I've messed this thing up. Now you have to really help me. And then the Lord began to help him, began to open his eyes to see things. I love his teachings very well. And he said, what happens is that what he managed to do is that when they wake up in the morning, she goes for her personal devotion. Mm-hmm. He goes for her personal devotion and quiet time. He goes for his personal devotion and quiet time. Mm-hmm. Then when they both individually finish their personal devotion and quiet they now come together <laughs> and now do joint devotion and that's, that's, that's what makes it healthy. That's the triangle indeed. Because we've had this issue of, uh, it's family devotion, you call family devotion. You, nobody really takes time to be with Christ. Exactly. And those things are not good. They are not good. Yes, we have uh, we have daily manuals, that are daily and daily devotionals, and they are fine. Yeah. But it shouldn't be used as a replacement for personal yeah. uh, quiet time with Christ. Yeah. 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 Everyone should have it. Yeah, so basically, their marriage became so strong because the triangle ideology was brought into place. Mm. He goes to Christ, she goes, she to, goes to Christ, and then we come, then we come together. together. And then when we come together, it's just a full supply mm. supply business. Mm-hmm. And that if we understand this, you don't need to be given rules and regulations. Yeah. You don't need to be given legalistic platforms on how to own your husband mm-hmm. so you can submit to your own mm. husband. There are no rules there. Yeah. Christ is the rule. Christ is the Christ is the is the, is the, is the Bible says the beginning and the end of of, of righteousness. Mm. So when Christ becomes the you see that you just know how to go about it. Yeah. You you, ju- you just you know how to go about this car that you own. Mm. And when you start seeing that there are faults in the car, you know how to go about it. Mm. Mm. 
praise god hallelujah uh we are we are far we are far into our timing for this um session today okay so based on what we've heard in view of this uh biblical marriage for wives requires that wives brings herself you know and any other relationship she has under obedience to her husband mm. so yes pastor has given some some orders pastor has given some instructions oh man of god has has instructed that so so and so be done uh you know uh, but it shouldn't be above what your husband wants okay so pastor says come for um night video if your husband says uh, uh no i don't think we should go and you cannot walk around hearing from god please submit to your husband uh, because you have some wives that i then i go uh, i obey christ <laughs> you don't obey christ at the expense of you know the the home is still the institution that christ has given to you to manage yeah you know yeah. so you don't go uh pastor said it uh, are you saying that pastor does not know what he's saying you begin to argue with your husband are you can you say this in front of the pastor can you can you can you do you want to start against this you know all those kind of it shouldn't be it's not necessary and, and that's the reason why from the onset we always plead with lead with the females the ladies mm. Before you get married, please make sure that this man can be the Jesus you see. Exactly. He can hear God. Mm. He can speak for God. Mm -hmm. He can speak the word of he can say what God is saying. Mm -hmm. Because um it's the first basis. Now, in a situation where you married somebody that is not like that, mm. then he's Christ is the head of the um, of the husband and the husband is the head of the home. Head just speaks of leadership. Yeah. He doesn't speak of control he doesn't speak of uh um it, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now so he's he's the most leadership structure yeah now so in a situation where he is not somebody that can hear god as it were what you need to do is if for example like pastor given is an order and the husband is agitating to us to the order what you do is you better go on your news yes so go back to christ go back to, the, to christ and say christ please pass over this order now is this order in line with you exactly now if it's in line with you now please talk, talk to, to my, my husband touch his heart touch his heart you know instead of spending all your energies and time discussing and trashing your husband for trying to go against pastors or this mm. <laughs> praise god so aside christ it is a great mistake to consider another person's leadership higher than that of your husband irrespective of the person's status his title his age you know you shouldn't override um the leadership um, um you know uh, design that god has put over the family because of your affiliation to a <laughs> man of god or a prophet you understand what i'm trying to say yeah um, because now i'm still to, I'm, I'm i'm more focused on the church on the, on the christian home not just um mm -hmm every other kind of marriage we are more focused on the christian home because for you to have christ as your example that means you're a christian home yeah uh, your marriage was based on and you see even peter the focus the the, the author of this scripture still talks about um if you have an unbelieving husband yeah okay yeah. use your lifestyle which i think from tomorrow we have to go to that the b part we'll continue from the b part tomorrow you know using your lifestyle to convert your husband or, and to even be in submission to such a husband yeah yeah praise god so yeah. we're going to um look at that aspect but for today we are going to cap it up on the fact that um uh, after christ is your husband yeah not christ your pastor then your husband not christ um your father then your husband yeah. not christ your prophet than your husband no mm. it's christ the husband and then every other person will be in subjection yeah. <laughs> and and you must you must you must own, must own. make sure you own mm -hmm. make sure you own mm -hmm. you, you, you 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 no other person can own your husband mm -hmm. you are the one to own your husband so first part since day one we've understood that um if you're able to identify your your that high that thing of high value yeah. that you can esteem in your husband it helps it boosts um your your being it's being, being subjection, subjection. Being, okay being submission, yeah. the personality of subjection <laughs> let me use that simple term yeah. the personality of subjection we're able to identify that thing of highest thing yeah it helps you then now the mentality of ownership yeah. also helps in the past uh, being a personality of submission in fact um the the 
identifying the thing of high esteem mm. that is the respect the respect virtue yeah, yeah. in that in your husband mm. should be what should be done even in courtship yeah that's what of course that's what i said for singles yeah. it's, good, it's good news for them it, it, yeah. please that don't, don't joke with that don't joke with don't, you see um marriage is more than like um somebody said the man of god said he said marriage marriage is more than hoggies and kisses mm. marriage is more than romance is more than emotions mm. marriage is a beautiful journey mm. but you need to know the basic things that have to be put in place mm. yeah else you you get to a point and you get stuck stuck and uh, like so women are stranded in marriage mm -hmm. and so men are also stranded this yes yeah, some people say marriage is a scam marriage is scam you have to say a lot of fear, fear women fear women there are a lot of, you know you know and but you that need to good. identify that if you did not identify before you got into marriage mm -hmm. in marriage it may, be difficult. it may be difficult it may be difficult but now when you are there and it's difficult you can call on god call for his yeah, mercy yeah. and he's going to show you you have to be patient you have to be patient that patient that long suffering yeah, you have, you have, you have, you have, you have, for some for some it may just be their 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 leadership style mm. may just be the man's leadership style mm. one thing i loved so much about my dad was his leadership style mm. i sat down to take leadership place for him if i'm a woman to marry him I'll just marry him because of his leadership style. Mm. It was not so much of a, he doesn't talk so much, it was not so much of a charismatic person, mm. but his leadership was spotless. Mm. In the same thing. And leadership is not a physical virtue. Yeah. It's a very, it's a spiritual virtue. Mm. In the same thing. So, you have to find that out. And on that ground. And it's, so, I, I like the point you just made. Leadership is not a physical virtue. Yeah. It's more of a spiritual it's a spiritual virtue. virtue. Same way, subjection. It's a spiritual, but they are, they are spiritual, they are spiritual. Most of the times, you see, the reason why we have problems in marriage is because we are trying to use physical, use physical means. means to achieve spiritual mm. tasks. They are spiritual tasks, they are not physical. Yeah. So you just have to take them from the spiritual mm. point. I mean, you, you, can you imagine being witness without knowing Christ? It's not possible. You can't witness Christ when you don't know Christ. You don't know Christ. Yeah. Yeah, so. so you can't be submission you can't be submission where you don't know you don't have the spirit, spiritual connectivity to actually you know deliver it physically yeah yeah so it's it's we, over the years i we discovered that marriage was taken very physical mm -hmm. and is affecting us because despite all the all the all the pro, um, do's and don'ts that they've told us we still have a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Are you get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Christian homes are still suffering. Christian homes are still suffering. suffering. They're suffering a great deal. Mm. We have to take it back to the drawing board. Yeah. It has to be back to the spiritual basis. Yeah. And when we get it right spiritually, physically, it's physically just it will align. It's just like a, it's just like a new creature. Uh, all so, things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yeah, that's spiritual. Mm. You know, because a, a person who gives his life to Christ today does not suddenly become short when is it all person no you know so we're not talking about this but the more he he rubs mind with christ then the, the better he becomes as a physical person yeah. you know yeah. that is it mm -hmm. just the same way in marriage mm -hmm. i wish we come to this um, level of understanding as believers and then we begin to see a new turn in our marriages time is not on our side <laughs> So to bring this meeting to a close, please give us uh, prayers. Thank you, Abba Father, for another time of fellowship we've had in your presence. We bless and appreciate you. Lord, we ask that these words we have heard, we shall practice them in our daily lives. Amen. That our homes shall be heaven and earth indeed. Amen. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Be glorified, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for your time. God bless you. Now is your moment of salvation. If you are yet to make the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and personal Savior, we request that you say this prayer along with many others now. Say this words, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, I repent of my sins, and ask that you forgive my sins. I believe that you shed your blood on the cross, died for my sins, and rose again in the third day. Today, I invite you into my life today. Wash me by your blood, make me your own until eternity be my lord and personal savior thank you lord jesus in jesus precious name
For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number 033-154-551-2013. Swift code M B G H G H A C to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. You can send to account number 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria. Account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. Or, send us an email via chimdiohahunaministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. We believe you were blessed listening to this teaching from God's Word. May your soul remain ever refreshed and revived. We would love to hear your praise report today. Beloved, remain connected to Grace Life Comey Podcast. Jesus is Lord.